Greetings, everyone. Welcome to the movie discussion of Army of the Dead um, by Zack Snyder. Um, call this uh, decoding. Um, also, and or review because we will be sharing constructive criticism about this um, film. Um, I think one of the um, first questions that um, I should ask is like, what is this film about? And um, I think this film is about, um, it's about war. Um, Army of the Dead is the title. Um, armies are used in wars, so it's, it's about war. And it's also um, a good example of, um, Racism, white supremacy, it's practiced throughout through the use of words and through the use of um, what the characters do. Um, I have a ton to say about this film, but I'll let others um, maybe answer the question or share their um, share some comments. Yeah, I, I notice a lot of um, propaganda in this film. Uh, I agree that it is a, a film about war. But primarily, it's a, it's a film about, you know, uh, white people versus non-white people. Um, for the most part, you have um, white people uh, coming out as out of life, you know, white female. Um, but I want to go to the beginning of the film where the, uh, the cause of the zombie outbreak was a... Uh, soldier by the name of horseman you know and names mean a lot so when you hear horseman you also uh, think of like you know the four horsemen you yeah. know the bringer of the apocalypse the bringer of uh you know the end of the world and revelations yeah that entire that convoy was called the four horsemen it wasn't called horseman it was called the four horsemen yeah yeah but also i think that was his name too because i had the subtitles on oh. and then Horseman, yeah. Um, also, you, I, I agree. There's a lot of mistreatment of non-white people. Uh, in the opening scenes, there's a scene where a white woman um, opens the door of a car. And she sees that a guy is bitten. He's non-white male, non-white female. Both are would, would be classified as black. I'm sure. And she kills both of them, even though only one of them was bitten. You know, she kills them both. And um, we're supposed to be like, oh, they're bitten. So what else do we do? So uh, there's a lot of that in the film. And of course, the zombies are non-white people. You know, consciously or subconsciously, they are the other. They even call it the other ones, the zombies that are more organized, quote unquote. <laughs> but yeah, I got I got a lot of notes here. Some of the people chime in. And I'll come back. Uh, really, really um, well said. I would um, yeah, the the zombies. I I would say they definitely function as um, not white because um, they are nuked in the end. And um, so far only non-white people have been nuked. And um, also they were like subjugated. They um, were like in prison and they um, in a wall. And um, the only survivors of this film you is- your stuff in the oven? Yeah, is a white female. And um, I don't know if the, the family she saved survived I don't know if they died or crashed in our, or died in our crash or whatever happened, but she still um, is the only survivor of this film. And that is a testament to um, white power, race and white supremacy. And also, um, of course, the only um, not whites who come close to like surviving this ordeal or survive it is because of white people. They're, they're saved by white people. And uh, through the the black character, uh, I don't remember his name, but he uh, was very uh, interesting. And um, 
for the entire movie, I was like really surprised not to not to see a lot of um black male misandry, but it, it's I think it's safe, safe to say that um Zack Snyder saved like the black male misandry um for the end of the movie, which I'm gonna definitely t- touch on later. Um yeah, and uh I remember the Dieter character. Uh, of course, I remember the white guy's name, not the black guys. It probably just goes to show how little his name was said in the movie. Um, but he was like, um, there's something I noticed that like he was trying to get like, um, like affirmations from um, Omar Hardwick. I think his name. That's his name. His character. He was trying to get affirmations from him. And uh, he eventually got it when he cracked open the safe. He finally got the dap, like the handshake. You know, he got like the I'm cool to a black guy now. Dap is what I, is what I call that. Uh, and also, it was um, nice of him to um, save that character um, by, you know, I, really nice to not see a black guy sacrifice himself for um, a white person. A black, you know, so, so that was me very surprising. I definitely expect him to die much sooner yeah uh, I, I agree i also want to mention how um war creates like these uh, environments where the people are kind of like functioning in a cycle of trauma and i, I kind of think that's what the opening of the film establishes is that um these soldiers are the reason why this outbreak happens um and um, also, like, it's with the uh, free Palestine and Israeli uh, Gaza conflict slash war being um, so heightened via social media and white supremacist um, these, um, uh, media outlets making it important at this moment, because this happens all the time when it fizzles out again. But um, it's pretty interesting how they kind of coincide. Um, and also the nuclear, the use of nuclear weapons in this film is very symbolic. I, I am, I would not be surprised if things in the news were becoming more nuclear. People were talking about nuclear weapons or weapons of mass destruction. Because um, in the film, there's a character, white male, was suspicious the moment he came on, um, joined the team. Uh, white male with sunglasses and, and a black hat. He kind of um, infiltrates the group and he's a saboteur, he's a murderer, a liar. He has all the functioning um, behavior patterns of a Yurugu, of an incomplete being. And um, I just, did you, I wanted to know if you guys noticed how he, like we just read the simple, um, simple manual for sabotage so um he was actually doing some of those things you know he set up several people to die um and just just he behaved like a uh you know a white supremacist basically it did he he got information before revealing information about himself um he was able to get non-white people to fight each other and die was able to lock people in places and um, when white people are really, they really enjoy locking non-white people in places, you know, some examples would be the, uh, you know, industrial prison complex where like where 80% of black males are in prison, something like that, some absurd number. And um, the ICE camps in America with the, all the uh, non-white brown children and, and women and men and males but yeah, yes, lots of stuff in this film. And um, I, I, I do believe he saved the black male Miss Andre because uh, not, not, not to get into the ending so quickly, but um, that's because this black male is going to be the cause of a whole new wave of death. And um, it's because he's going to be like a super, super nigger zombie, I, I imagine. Yeah. And the sequel that they're gonna try to push, he may even be able to talk. Yeah. Oh my God, uh, Miss B, <laughs> what's that say? Wow. 
the character that Sert is talking about, his name was Martin. That was the um, right hand man or the, I guess, the henchman for the Chinese guy. I forgot the Chinese guy character. I forgot oh, his name. He, he was so called Japanese. Oh, Japanese. Yes. Japanese. Yes. Because they had a line about, <laughs> he used the, he used the line. What did he say? He said, um, oh, I wrote it down. Japanese. Oh, I'm skipping, skipping. Yes, Japanese. And in in dirt and dirt, the, the, the white guy, the guy who's going to the face said, No, you can't say that. And they're like, No, I think you can. He, he's Japanese. And I think it's okay for him to say it. And then he turned around and correct, corrected himself and said, Lemon, lemon squeezy, like how the <laughs> that was funny. Mm-hmm. But um, anyway, going back to the very, very beginning. Um I thought it was interesting when they said the original constitution, the one that was written in blood. Um, I thought that was interesting. And then they had another uh, line. They said the headpiece staff of Ra. When the when the um, two horsemen, the two guys that were in the um, army truck, when they were talking. Um, I thought that was interesting for them to bring up those two things. I don't know why. Um, I, I'm going to look more into that. And um, yeah, I'll just, I'll just leave it at that for now. Yeah, I, I wanted to uh, go back to the. It looks like Omari Horror's character name was Vanderhe, Vanderhul, something like that. Um, but uh, there is a there's a a scene where, where the people who are going to be involved in the heist are being introduced, and um, you see everyone with guns. But when we first see um, the black male character. We see him with a chainsaw, a tool, you know, not a not, not, not a weapon, not a gun, a tool, and he's slicing up zombies, and, and he's, but um, he's using a laboring tool because black black males exist for labor, and a workforce, you know, no one wants, no white person, no white supremacist wants to see a black male, you know, with a gun. Potentially white zombies, you know. Wait, sir, sir, you cut off for a second there. Yeah, but um, I was just saying that no white supremacists and white people don't want, don't want to see a um, black male shooting potentially white zombies. So it was interesting how they introduced him first without a weapon, you know, and then the, the next scene is a white person being introduced and they have two guns, you know. <laughs> interesting. Very, very telling. Uh, Miss Maria? Well, I was raising my hand because um, I have, I, like, I wasn't able to finish the movie, so I was going to ask, at any point, does Omari Hardwick's character ever use a gun? Because I think uh, what you were saying, sir, makes a lot of sense. I think it would be, like, too damaging for white people to see this uh, Black man using a gun like that unless it's to save other white people um yeah he he does use a gun and it is to um help um save other white people and um and himself but um yeah and uh, um i don't know if he, if he ever uses a machine gun he definitely he definitely uses a pistol does anyone remember him using like a uh yeah, he uses a, a um also rifle at times okay also, um, keep in mind this film is a zombie apocalyptic film, and and we have non-white people mistreating non-white people. I, I think the uh, the security guard fellow who was abducted by the zombies would be classified as non-white, um, and um, he was he he was like an enforcement at this little uh, camp. This this camp. And, um, and he was uh, accused of rapist and an accused abuser. So um, keep in mind, Zack Snyder, the writer and a director and cinematographer of this film, um, imagines a world where we have zombies now. You know, we have someone else. We have a whole new entity that we can kill and mistreat. And yet, the non-white people are still mistreating each other. You know, while while, while living in greater confinement in the context of them living in that quarantine camp, you know, which also could be more um, 
propaganda for what's to come, you know, who, who knows how far they're going to take this uh, COVID-19 thing and um, how, how, how far they're going to push the vaccines and who knows what's going to happen with, um, you know, these types of situations coming up where people are having to be in quarantine camps because they didn't get vaccinated and now there's a new strand <laughs> that they'll create, you know. Ms. B? Going back to something that was said earlier about Omarion, Om, Om, Omar Hardwick's character, how his name was barely mentioned, I think it was mentioned about three times. Van. I think it was said about three times throughout the whole picture. Um, going back a little bit to the beginning, um, when the two guys were driving the package, the the zombie in the in the car, and one was trying to say, "Hey, like you know, I wonder what we're what what's in the back. Like, is it something cryptic, or it could be?" And the other guy was like, "Huh? What? I don't know." Like already to me, white people play ignorant. Or whatever, like they're introducing the first two characters, like one of them is ignorant. Um, yeah, I'll mute my line. Yeah, Helen, I totally agree. And I feel like that was such propaganda because they're trying to make that whole beginning sequence with the army. I was like, are they really trying to make us pretend like these people aren't like trained to kill and take commands like robots? Like, there's a point where I think someone, he gets the command that you guys need to leave and he waits at least 30 seconds to a minute before he even tells the other guy, hey, you yes. need to get out of here. I was like, that makes no yes. sense at all. There were so many <laughs> parts like that in the beginning scene where they made the army people look like doofuses. And I'm like, this is, this is not possible because these are people who are literally trained <laughs> to kill like on command, you know? So I thought that that was just some propaganda. Yeah. Agreed, I wanna, and I wanna comment on what um, Sir um, previously said. Um, like, what, he, what you said about the um, quarantine camps and um, whatnot, I think um, like that goes to a, a question that I wrote down, you know, like, um, you know, why was this film made, you know? They call watching um, TV like programming. Are are they uh, attempting to, to program people for um, some sort of situations where um, more death and extreme sanity is enacted? Because I also wrote that. That's my note. Like this, this movie has a lot of uh, instances of um, extreme. Yeah, I'll just jump in. Um, so yeah. Also, a lot of Roman ties to Greek mythology, I believe the uh, the uh, super zombie, uh, the, the king zombie, how, how, however you want to classify this creature. His name is Zeus. Um, I do believe he gets his name because he goes to uh, Las Vegas and he sees the uh, statue of Zeus and um, he kind of gets his inspiration for the art you know, from the racist culture that's around him. Um, and I, 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 and I thought it was symbolic how um, there's this dead zombie that, that moves like it's alive. And I, I'm presuming it, it thinks as if it's alive, but it's not, it's dead. It's, it's dead on the inside. It's a killer, natural killer. Uh, we saw how it killed those army men, no problem, one by one. Um, and I, I believe that uh, it's quite symbolic because he's looking at the statue of Zeus, um, a, uh, a symbol for the white supremacist, a uh, god of sorts, and who is also a killer, you know, he's a jealous, alcoholic killer. And, um, and I, I suspect that all you would lose are, you know, natural born killers. Um, I suspect they're all like these zombies. And um, back to what 0526 was um, talking about the programming. I, I highly suspect that this film was made to, uh, you know, be a part of the, the uh, people's mentalities, people's mindset to be programmed to 
be ready for this type of situation to be able to get a gun and um, just start shooting people, murder, murder them, you know, kill them. Uh, in Louisiana, they just passed a bill where you no longer need a uh, permit. It's okay, man, Perry. To kill your weapon, you, you, you don't need a weapon anymore. You don't need like a, a you know, a weapon. weapon permit anymore. Yeah, yeah, weapons, yeah, because now you can just carry a gun on you and freely. You know, someone calls someone calls you problems. Uh, if they're if they're non white, just shoot them in the face. Uh, I fear for my life. I, you know, that's that is what this movie is made for. You know, to condition people, shoot on sight. It's fun. Killing is fun. Look how fun it is, right? You know, that's what the movie is telling you whenever a zombie gets killed. Look how fun killing is. And, and also, I think the character who had like who was non who may have who, who I suspect to be non white who had like the blonde stripe in his hair. Um, I suspect he was like the character made for like the the people with the popular culture, like the gamers, the people into like video game streamers and stuff like that. Because um, he had a um, his firearm was like custom. It was like a gold, a gold in a weapon, and that is something very common in video games to get like, you know. Gold in accessories for your, for your gun or that literally make it gold. So and then the way he died, it looked like he like was a video game character because when he died, all his like money flashed like like fell out of him in like a slow motion. I'm like, this is literally how it looks um, in a video game when like people die. <laughs> so I was like, wow, so this is like the gamer character to get like um, people of that or to like people in that like uh, frequency to relate to this um, movie and to like, you know, feel connected and like for the refined white supremacists and the ones who are like, you know, into like um, military stuff, um, war, they, they can relate to the um, Dave Platista character who's like, you know, really, really serious and, you know, and, and gets the job done, you know, shoots, you know, and, and is really, really good at shooting. So they're definitely training, um, Training them up. This is really refined programming. And, uh, yeah, the uh, I'm gonna talk about the black misandry, but I see um Miss Kamari is that a new hand or um I uh, I okay so, I'm sorry. Um Miss B, would you like to okay big question for everybody in the room? You know what's coming. What is Dave Batista is he white or non white? Mm, I'm trying to remember what um, one of the white people said during the meeting when they mentioned them, but I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I suspect Dave Batista is. Uh... <laughs> able to function as a white person. Uh, I don't think anyone will call Dave Spatista a nigger, so I think he's a white person. Uh, yeah, I think I think he can he he be totally fine at a white supremacist rally. No one will question, hey are you white? No one's gonna come up to him and say that. Um, uh, even with even it, with his last name? I mean, it's just that Spanish people are white, you know. To me, it's, you know, people who are like people from Portugal and Spain and like Italy, you know, they they have those uh, ethnic names. Uh, to me, they're white people. And people say Vin Diesel was um, non-white, but you know, he was a white person to me. Because no one's gonna call him a nigger and throw coffee in his face. Actually, Vin Diesel has a black parent. Surprisingly, if you look at pictures of him, I, I, he transformed himself to be white. Honestly, but if you look at other pictures of him, I would say he looks like a at least a person who has like mixed black heritage. But I, I agree about people from like Spain and Italy, etc. Uh, my audio cut out. I did not hear um, your answer at all, Ms. Kamara. I would like to hear your opinion on that. 
I was trying to bring up is still Dave Batista. Oh no, I was just saying that um, Vin Diesel has a black parent. And what was your answer to Ms. Helen's question? I'm sorry. Could you? Could you? Oh, Dave Batista. I I have. To, I'm looking him up. Him up right now. So. Oh, if he was the he's white <laughs> to me, but obviously I'm black, so I can't really define who's white or not. And you, Miss Helen? Say that again. What's your answer to the question? I think that he is not, I think he's non-white, but he's able to, I think white people allow him to act white or uh, not act white. I don't want to say act white. Act him. I think he's non-white, but he's allowed to play parts of a white man. And that's how I want to put it. Hmm. Is that only in um area area um three or in um our areas? Would you think he is allowed to function as um white? No, I I think it's sometime. Sometime he's not white. Sometimes he's white. He did a movie where he was like the bodyguard for a little white girl. I was like, oh, <laughs> this makes sense. <laughs> yeah. So I think he was non white that movie. Hmm. Yeah, well, I think it's a movie. Um, he functioned as um. Would you say he? I think he functioned as a um. Non-white person because he he because he died, at the end, and um not only that, but like like did anyone catch that he was like saying Kate when he was like a, when he was like a zombie, or, or, or was I just hearing things? Uh, I didn't hear any cognizant. I just heard a zombie screaming. <laughs> uh, okay, I, th I thought I heard, um, he heard him like like growling Kate, but um, he did die. He he did, he he did sacrifice himself to save a white woman, and, and I think that's like the role um, non-white people are supposed to play, you know, dying to um, save a white woman. So that's why I think he functions as non-white. But as for like, you know, being serious and, and, and um, getting the job done, that is definitely like um, more in line with how um, racist men and racist women operate um, in 2021. Does anybody remember how Kate was talking to him? <laughs> when she was talking to him and she was like, I'm going on this mission. And he was like, no. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. the, the, the racist uh, woman roles are always so like um, just really, really distasteful for to me. Uh, and um, like we have to see this. Like I think it's really stupid. Well, what um, like her trying to go into like you know. A zombie infested Las Vegas, and she has like no training for that sort of thing. You know, she's just a a, a regular um, white woman, and um, yeah, she just like um, and the scene where she was crying, I, I literally um just just left my screen until that was over because um, like oh, just seeing white woman cry just just does something to my energy field, so um. Yeah, I, I just really did not like her role, but like definitely a great display of white power. You know, people like to say uh, it's just a white man or like people like to um, point the finger solely at the white man, but it takes um, racist man and racist woman to uh, maintain and refine this system of um, white supremacy. So of course she comes out, she comes out on top and survives because it takes white women to produce white babies. So that, that could be um, a well-seen moment. I thought it was very interesting that, um, and um, a display of um, practice of um, racist code 
because uh, the white people are, are already um, practicing deceit amongst the group. Um, I think, um, yeah, the, the, the saboteur Sir mentioned is, um, he, he's already, he's like um, sabotaging them and getting them killed. And the uh, racist woman pilot, she's also saying, yo, we should, um, you know, we should kill this guy. So they're both practicing deceit, you know, like even if um they're white, they'll still practice deceit against them because um yes, sometimes white sacrifices are necessary for um, them to practice racism in the way that they choose to practice racism. We're still following the racist code of deceit, you know, using non-white people to um you know meet your needs and gains. Yeah. Um, can I ask a question? I'll ask a question to the group. Uh, do you think the zombies in this film are stand-ins for non-white people? I would say, I would say yay, yeah, you would say yes. But I also think it's um it's double layered. But I would say yes because um um and um they are like humanoid um creatures or, or whatever, and um they um do display that um they're capable of developing like you know um emotions because we did see a zombie cry in this movie, which I don't, I don't know if a lot of people have seen that before, but um very very uncomfortable. Yeah. So like, you know, it's like, you know, yeah, black people have feelings too type of moment, kind of for me. And like, but um Same. yeah, so I think um white people have been trained to like view everything humanoid with a conscious um that can think as a non-white person, especially a black person. So um yeah, possibly um and I also say that it's double layer because, you know, the creatures are pale, you know, and the creatures do go around, you know, killing and destroying. And um, that's what white people do as well. So, yeah. Yeah, I thought for a moment, I was like, okay, these the zombies are white people. And then a nec the next minute I was like, oh no, they're non-white people. But when, the, the lead zombie took the baby out of the lead female or lead woman zombie and was screaming because the baby, I don't like, oh my God, they had sex and had a baby? I was like, oh, this is new. Then I was like, oh, I, then I went back to thinking that they were white at that moment for some reason. Uh, it could be because they're trying to like, you know, I don't know, like, and that looked like a like a like a, a more special kind of zombie. So maybe he would have been like um a, a better version of their um zombie um race. So maybe that could be an indication of um this racist logic, I believe. Um, I I noticed in the dialogue of the film, there was a, a moment where like. They were talking about the differences between the the, the, the the zombies, and um, they mentioned how the other zombies are a threat because they're um, organized, smarter, and uh, it kind of made me think of uh, black people, like groups of black people who are just, for the most part, dumb, and uninformed, and, and um, so unaware, even though they, they could turn on the news or go on YouTube and watch members of the race that they've been, you know, sub, subject, subjected to participate as, you know, you, got, you have to participate as a black person. You know, you're not actually black. You have to, it's something that you have to participate as. It's not something that you do, you just, you agree with it and um, you get with the program. And I, it reminded me of uh, how, imagine if Black people were organized, you know, and um, they were 
no longer, you know, worried about social media or worried about being liked or worried about, you know, you're just worried about silly things. What if black people are like, you know what? I don't, I don't want to be a hashtag or I don't want to be a, a nigger. Uh, I want to be um, a problem solver. I want to end white supremacy. I want to, I want to say white supremacy out loud. You know, I want to write about white supremacy and make sure everyone knows that I'm no longer, you know, gonna lie, lie about my reality. Because uh, I, because, because uh, I, I thought it was interesting how they um, classified them as threats once they became organized. Yeah. Very, very well said. And uh, yeah, imagine if um, now white people, especially black people, attempted to practice code. You know, that would do a lot to um, you know, disrupt. The system of white supremacy and um also just and so much conflict amongst non-white people as well um sorry i had a question um so helen uh if you could clarify so that in the movie the zombies could have kids with other zombies or with other humans the lead the lead woman zombie was obviously pregnant by the lead zombie the the man zombie yeah um she was killed and um he reached inside inside of her stomach and he pulled out you know like you could think of like a c-section he pulled out a baby that was obviously a zombie i, I believe oh wow okay thank you so then i, I would say that the zombies are definitely a non-white people or i think at least based on dr wilson and like the fear of genetic annihilation like that if if they can even like reproduce then i don't think i've ever seen a movie where the zombies can reproduce that's really interesting yes yeah yeah i've never seen that either that was new i'm um, going back to something that you said earlier sort of how like um comedic the army soldiers were when they were running, when the two main ones were running away from and going down the hill, going away from like everything that was going on, <laughs> and they said we're far enough, and then one fell, and then the the lead zombie came out and grabbed grabbed the other one that was standing over the other one that was going to help him up. I was like, mm, we're far enough, really? They they didn't even go that far. <laughs> I was like, wow. Yeah, it was very silly. Yeah, not only did he fall, but he <laughs> fell and discharged his weapon. Like, I don't think that happens in a um, war where um, racist men, racist suspects are literally trained, like, quite efficiently with these um, firearms. So I don't think that happens often. That's just, like, trying to uh, present white people as, um, yeah, like, not serious about racism, which they very much are. So um, yeah, really, really. Yeah. Um, I kind of want to talk a bit about um, the, the, the character that was sent by the government or uh, sent by some type of uh, enforcement agency. Um, how there was a uh, a level of mistrust amongst the uh, non-white female that he killed first. He set her up to die. And um, I think oftentimes white people put this in their films to kind of showcase like reverse racism or what they imagine or what they classify as reverse racism, which is not even real. But a lot of things white people uh, say and do are uh, not real, like blue lives matter, like it's just nonsensical. But um, I thought it was interesting because they they were pretty correct and not believing the white male who came on board and um, who was quite secretive. Uh, he turned out being very very like bad for them, killing multiple members and setting them up and um, violently. Uh, he made a zombie cry. He uh, killed the zombie's girlfriend. Martin. 
a queen and uh um, sir that's martin i know martin was the uh i think martin was well was that martin the, the, the that's his name yes that's the one that set them up that that set up that girl with the red bandana yep yeah yeah that was martin <laughs> martin was a. Uh, Martin represents my supremacy, you know, like I'm gonna I'm gonna get what I came here to get by any means necessary. You know. Uh I'm skilled enough to kill the pilot and take the plane. I'm skilled enough to uh you know capture these advanced zombies with, with my uh technology, my weapons. Uh I, I have been provided with access by whatever enforcement agency I work for. Because remember, he had keys to get in and out of his casino. You know, he was able to lock them inside the casino because of, he had the key card. Um, but yeah, he definitely represents like the uh, the white supremacists who are who are all about keeping that business going. You know, he came here to get not money. He came here to get the zombie's head. You know, he came to get. Well, he said, I can either take this and we can become immortal, or we can have our own zombie army, or we can have a weapon of mass destruction. You know, he said those things. Yeah, this movie is um, really, really sophisticatedly, like, um, coded with um, racist messages. Because if you um, think about it, like, who are we supposed to blame for, like, those people going in there trying to get that money, um, you can you can place that blame on the um, Japanese person, you know, who's a non-white person. But you know, the people responsible for that whole situation are, of course, uh, white people, racist man, racist woman. So um, really, really refined and really, really well hidden, because like the people who are uh, who have caused the most problems to planet Earth in this movie uh, from beginning to end will um, be non-white people. But um, white people started all of that destruction and chaos. And the war, you know, they, they started the war. Because, like, you know, if this movie is about war, it must be about the only war happening on planet Earth, which is the race war that white people have um, decided to start against non-white people, especially black people. So uh, really, really recorded, really, really um, a film that is a good example of um, refined racism in the um, area three entertainment. I had a feeling that um, the movie was a little bit predictable Cause like okay, they're gonna send a team in, and somebody's go, going to going to double cross somebody and do this and do that, or whatever. So that that part was a little um, predictable. Um, yeah, and uh, another part when they were talking about how that group that's inside of Vegas, the, the only group that you know that are alive, that they're not zombies, and they were talking about oh, you know, civil rights. They talked about a civil rights group. Um, trying to protest to get those people out. And I'm like, civil rights? Like, are they making fun of non-white people? Are they making fun of the civil rights like Mal um, like um, MLK and people like that? Like to throw that in there at that moment? Um, let's talk about the amount of money that they went in for and what everybody was supposed to be getting. Let's talk about that real quick. Yeah, I really um, wasn't um, paying too much attention to that, but I did notice that some were getting millions and some were getting um, just hundreds of thousands. And um, yeah, I did notice that um, um, Dieter got um, um, quite quite a little amount compared to uh, the non-white people. Or um, I don't know if they they please uh, is why or not in this. In this, in this film, but uh, his character as well. I also this movie is very predictable because the moment I heard him, I saw the, the main zombie character like put his head to the zombie's um, belly. I um, knew she was um, pregnant 
but I didn't I didn't think it was because they were um, having sex because I really don't like can have never imagined zombies have, having sex. I just imagined that she was pregnant when she got bit or something. But uh, yeah, th- that definitely uh, interesting. Um, uh, yeah, I think your um, theory definitely makes um, more sense than um, um, me suspecting that she was um, just pregnant while she got bit. Um, I also um, I had wrote down um, that I, I hope that like the the black character like found a way to um, like survive the nuke and then somehow just like walk out um, at the end of it. And I literally wrote that down, you know, as a hope, you know. And then when I saw it actually happen, I was like, you know, I was like, wow, you know. You know that's a, that's a that's a good you know takeaway. The black guy you know survived. You know I was I was kind of happy about that. You know, and then he gets on the plane. You know, and he's he's having like a a, a non constructive time with a um, white woman. But you know he, he's still alive. You know he survived like you know that conflict, um, that um, nuke. So, yep. um, but then we learned that like he's um infected you know he's about to become a a zombie and perhaps start another zombie war zombie conflict and um the area of the world known as mexico so i was like wow so i i crossed out that hope you know and then i wrote just black male basandry ultimate black male basandry like the black male is gonna cause another like serious world problem you know that's just that's just really racist and um yeah just the con- total continuing of conditioning everyone who watches these sorts of films to um you know black males are the problem you know they always mess stuff up you know so really really um interesting and um she was just very well said, 0526. Can I, can I say something? Oh, please. Yeah, the, the ending. Um, of course, after he humiliated Black Mel by uh, you know, giving us this, this false sense of, oh, he made it. He's the only survivor. Look at that. You know? And then um, I thought he was poisoned by the white females on the the plane and then he went to the bathroom and then we understand that he's been bitten and um to me that's like a fate worse than death because we already know that the plane's headed to um mexico and um if if what happened to las vegas happens again then it would be because of this black male you know and um if the black if white people don't already think of like people as zombies, with the end of this film, they'll have this in the back of their minds, like this message, like, oh, black people are the black men are the zombies, black people are the zombies. Yeah, because the ending, that's what I think they saw. That's what the, the audience left it. They they left with a uh, black male looking at himself with a zombie bite on his shoulder. And he just says, Oh fuck, you know. So it definitely ends with the black male being humiliated, got all this money, but it doesn't matter anymore because you're about to turn into a zombie. Um, you know, basically the black male thanks for being in my film. Now you're now you're like the the villain for the sequel. You know, the cause of the problem in the sequel. Okay. I definitely agree. Yeah, I definitely agree with both of y'all on that. And um, since we're skipping to the end, um, I I found it interesting when when um, Van Omar, I mean, yeah, Omar Hardwick, when he was going to buy the plane, he was like, oh, I want that plane right there. He survived everything. And he's like, oh, I want that plane right there. And she's like, oh, sir, you know, I'm not sure if you can. Now that female, if I'm not mistaken, was non-white. And then he takes out all this money and he puts it on and she's like, okay, I'll see what I can do. And I'm like, what? Like, she's, I don't know. She was giving him like attitude before whatever. And now that he pulled out all this money, oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, you, you can get this plane. And I'm like, mm, 
And then he gets on the plane, there's two white stewardess that see him, you know, that are serving him the wine and this, that, and the other. And I, I thought that was really interesting, that part. Yeah, black males get a lot of money. You can get a white women and you can, um, you know, not be, not be mistreated as much by other non-white people. Um, um, is it an act of racism that Zack Snyder um, gave like this false like he, he he like for pretty um for the black people who are a little bit less confused about the race problem he gave them like a false sense oh like the black guy survived you know you know this film you know wasn't that racist and then he makes the black person like you know the problem you know so i think that's a act of racism you know it's like a like a like a visual slap in the face um, I think, and um, yeah, just really, really interesting. And uh, also, like, um, just the way um, Omari, um, part of the character, spoke, I like it. It, may, it makes me think that Zack Snyder hasn't interacted with a black person for a very, very long time, because there's a line where he says, um, "That's heavy, brother." but I dig it. Something like that. I'm like, like, this is really like, you know, old slang. So it was like the last time um, Zack Snyder, this is like really like, you know, the last time Zack Snyder has interacted with a black person because this character is like, uh, I mean, maybe it's due to his age, but um, I don't know. It just, sound, it just seemed really um, like not realistic diction, you know, for that type of character. Another th another scene with Zan. Why did they have Zan fighting the lead um, zombie? That made no sense with his physical. Like what? You physically gonna fight the lead zombie? You see, he's ten times taller than you, bigger than you. That was comedic to me. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, another example of extreme insanity. And um, yeah, I was like, wait, what? I was like, you know, you're not even gonna use your little saw. Like, he didn't even use his saw to like kill zombies. Um, but um, yeah, I was like, wow, this is um really, really silly. He should not be uh, trying to fight this this zombie. Um, yeah, and they were just really not smart. They kept shooting him in the head multiple times. How many times have to shoot something? I, I don't even want to go into like all that. But I did notice that um, as soon as the non-white, I don't know, um, yeah, she was a non-white female, right? Who was um, helping um, um, Scott Ward throughout the movie, like the one who was like her, his right-hand man, I mean, her, his like right-hand man, the chick. Was she not white? Yes, yes, she's not white. That's Maria Del Del something. Let me let me get her name right. Maria, no, Anna Anna de la La Raga La Rega. Yeah, I might be saying it wrong, but um, yeah, that's Maria Cruz. Her character name was Maria Cruz. All right. Well, as as soon as thank you, as soon as she um like agreed to give um Scott words like character constructive help even though it is kind of like extreme insanity, but he, she agreed to give him constructive help. And right after that, she dies, you know? So yeah. It's just a horrible way, twist the head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's a very brutal way. Um, yeah, so I was like, that's really interesting. Can I, can I get constructive help? Um, really hard to get constructive help in this war. After trying to give constructive help, plus she just professed her feelings for him. Remember that part too. <laughs> yeah, see, yeah, that's why um, you know, that's why he can function as a non-white person because you know, no romantic like interest, you know, no like very little uh, masculinity shown besides like you know, participating in um, violence if that is um, masculinity in a system of white supremacy. 
Can anyone explain to me why the pilot, the female pilot, the woman pilot, why she kept lying? Why she kept lying about the the um helicopter not um working properly? Can somebody explain that to me? Why? Uh, I think she's um practicing racism, and also she just wanted to like remain useful to the to the team, you know. And like she 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 was definitely willing to like you know have everyone be stranded up there if she. You know, and she didn't get the um, helicopter to work. Because you remember, she said that, you know, she developed, she developed a conscious, you know, when she came back to save um, the, the couple of the final characters surviving at the end of the movie. She said she developed a conscious, you know, and um, maybe it takes a while for um, white people to develop a so-called conscious. But um, I thought that was really interesting. She was a really interesting character for sure. I guess she's being sarcastic. I, I'm going to put it off to her being sarcastic, but I didn't understand why she didn't just tell the truth. Look, you know, the, the helicopter's really jacked up. I have to fix it. Like, she kept saying it, and I'm like, what? Oh, oh, hey, does anybody remember when she was um talking about, like, the order of things? Like, hey, okay, who's number one? I should be number two because I got to fly the plane. Anybody remember that part? And she was like, well, this guy should be last. I think she was talking about a non-white person, but do anybody remember the triage? Uh, you know, her talking about, you know, who gets help, who who gets, who gets should get help first and second and third? Yeah, that's the Yorubu having to put everything in like in a hierarchy. hierarchy. And like, I didn't even think she was going to get the plane working, you know, but um, that's my mistake. Um, doubting um, the power of um, racist woman, you know, he definitely got the plane, I mean, the, the helicopter working. Um, Was there anything else that anyone um, noticed? Yeah, so from my research, it seems like they're, so the, that Anna character is supposed to be like non-white and like um, she's supposed to be one of the good guys, right? Yeah, yeah, you could, you could say she was um, attempting to help. Okay. Well, I think also, she, had, she, had, she had a lot to gain as well. I just, something that's interesting is I feel like they, Something that I noticed they're doing a lot is like making a lot of non-white uh, female characters like really good like fighters, etc. In the guise of like I guess like girl power or female empowerment, but I also think there's like another kind of agenda in that it's like they don't want to have too many non-white males who are competent and like good fighters or or clever like warriors I don't know if, if what I'm saying makes sense but it's just something I was thinking about when researching it mm. very very interesting thank you remember how um Chambers um, the bandana lady, how she didn't trust Martin, the the bodyguard, the white guy. How that would be interesting if more non-white people, you know, were suspicious of white people. You see how suspicious she was of him, and she was actually correct. Agreed. Um, yeah, they they sprinkle, uh, you know, a, a little a little truth in there. Yeah, that, that could be a good segue into. Um, like another question, like um, what 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 is this like? What what are the the messages in this movie? I think Sir um brought up um really good answers to this question earlier about how it's um just you know reinforcing um the racist logic and white people to just prepare to them to kill you know the whole the whole um um concealed carry permit in Louisiana, you know, allowing white people to kill more freely and possibly use a stand your ground more as well. Um, so I think um that's one of the messages, you know, just you know stay ready and able to um kill everything uh, not white subjugate it. Yeah, 
systems. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that most definitely. Um, yeah, just keep the violence going. Um, yeah, a lot of a lot of violence, a lot of awful lot of violence. Um, kill. Um, that white people can be ignorant. I think a little bit of that. A little. Um, also, what else? There was something else in there that was really interesting. Oh, um, blame blame the non-white black male. You know how it ended you know, for the next catastrophe or whatever. And um, yeah, I got to think, but there's something else in this too. Yeah, I, I would say, um, so I'll say there's a lot. Um, lots of uh, white sacrifice. Um, the, the like coyote who was like, you know, taking people into the zombie zone, um, which is really um, not constructive. Why are you, uh, why is a white woman taking um, non-white people into a, um, a war zone? Cause like, you know, army of the dead, that's where the zombies are the enemies in this movie. So that's, you know, enemy occupy, uh, occupy land. So that, that, that's where she's taking you know, victims of um, the war, victims of racism. So really, um, you know, well-hidden racism is being practiced throughout this movie. And- uh, Oh, let's got, not forget the white ally, the white ally, Katie, Kate. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, we, we talk, I think um, we talked about her. I don't think we used her name that much though, but yeah, she definitely um, is the only survivor. She's a white woman and she also saved um, non white people. I don't, I don't know if they survived. Did they survive that the people she found? I, I know I saw one get bit, but I don't know if any of them survived. But there's kids that she's going to be able to give the money to so she could, you know. So Kay definitely um, had the white power. But the coyote, she sacrificed herself, you know, extreme act of insanity, sacrificed herself to save um, the other. Um, non-white people and um, white person. And um, yeah, really interesting, hide it in plain sight. Uh, I'm gonna have to leave this meeting now really late here. I'm no longer able to uh, be constructive in this talk. So um, um, you guys have a good meeting. This is the meeting, I'll talk to you guys later. Uh, thank Hi, you. sir, have a good evening. Good night. Was there any other notes that folks have to share? Mm, no, no, not really. Let me see. Um, oh, when um when the, the safe the safe cracker. When he first saw the safe, you remember what he said? He said, you, he said, you've been in the dark waiting for me. You're so beautiful. And I was like, oh, that's a, I think that's a wealthy moment. Oh, well, I, yeah, because, you know, you know, the, the white, is he, is he supposed to be the white light, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> really, really good catch. Uh, definitely um, miss that. And also another thing, um, remember when like the zombies were around him, like well, I think one touched him for the first time and he screamed how he sounded just like a girl. A few times he screamed just like a girl. And then yeah. when he finally did kill um, a zombie, I think the bride or whatever, how happy he was and excited. And I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Dang, so, so, so you have to kill a non-white to, to get over that fear of genetic annihilation and then get really serious about your racism. Wow, I, I really, what you said made me think of that, but wow, that's really uh, a good catch. And uh, was Omari Hardwick like his sidekick? Or like, because I, I really like, you know, that's what it seemed like to me that he became kind of like um, his sidekick. Or he just wanted to be, he just wanted to be buddies with him. I, I, I don't know. Oh, I had a question for um, everyone. 
Who do you think is the intended audience for the film and why? Like what messages do you think that audience is getting? Oh, good question. That's good. Oh, I got to think about that. Uh, I think it's for, um, I think it has a huge audience now. Because like this is going to reach a lot of non-white people and white people. I think it's going to reach a ton of white people because um, Zack Snyder uh, has made so many uh, movies in different um, genres. He's made like 300, which is like, you know, like a Spartan type movie. And he made um, recently um, the Justice League movies. So like he has a really, really uh, a lot of traction behind his name right now. And like people are heavily, uh, deeply entrenched in like uh, comic book movies and like those characters. So I think this has a huge audience for non-white people and white people. Um, I think it's gonna further the confusion that white people can be ignorant about racism and white supremacy and reinforce the racist suspects and white people, um, how to practice racism and um, just keeping them ready to um, practice direct violence and indirect violence. So I think it's made for gamers. I think it's made for um, the, the average non-white person and the average white person who uh, consumes a lot of, um, <laughs> we spend a lot of time and energy in um, the area of entertainment. Uh, it's made for people who like comic book movies. It has a, a huge, huge audience. Um, Yeah, I agree. I think it's going to hit, I think, everybody. Um, definitely, I think, males, men, because of the violence, the action, and um, a little bit of a romance, a little a touch bit of that, but not really. But yes, yeah, it's, it's definitely going to, I think it's going to be popular. Definitely, most definitely, with everybody. <laughs> What about you, Ms. Car Kamaria? Who do you think this film is intended for? Um, well, again, I didn't finish it, but I agree that, I mean, they, they try to market things to like as many people as possible. Um, but I always feel like anything that has to do with like zombies and stuff usually has to do with, um, like non-white like it's about white people's fear of non-white people taking over so I think all the messaging at least is for white people and I'm wondering if it has to do with like all of this sudden like people are suddenly very fearful about China having all this power or something so I always asked thought it was interesting that the guy was a Japanese business guy but I think that the, so I think that the, the messages is trying, especially, I don't know, I just think it's so interesting that this, these zombies could have kids. And that's why I really think it's, I think it's for white people. And that messaging is for, uh, is, that messaging is kind of like, you know, non-white people producing more and more offspring and taking over. Um, and, and if they have um, non-white people helping, it's just for the non-white people who, feel like they can have a little piece of the white supremacy pie if they just cooperate. So I think that the non-white people will see themselves maybe in Omari Hardwick's character. But this is also for me not fully watching all of it. How far did you get, Kamari? Kamaria. Oh, I don't know how to pronounce your <laughs> name, I'm sorry. No problem, it's Kamaria. Um, I really did not get that far. I think. I got to the scene where the the Guardian of the Galaxy guy is like, I, I it's probably like 15 to 20 minutes into the movie when they're like um, at the diner or something and the Asian guy or the Japanese guy is like propositioning him about it because the first scene uh, felt very like predictable. And then I was like, I don't know if I can do this for two and a half hours. <sighs> Makes total sense. Um, 
Helen. Oh yeah, you 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 answered the question. I I remember. Yeah, I think the this film, this zombie film, I think um it's uh like I think uh, most zombie films, it's a um, huge roasting moment because you know the only um in these films like the zombies are of course a threat to um white people uh, a threat to um so-called society the status quo because you know all they're concerned with is you know you know kill like, like surviving by you know eating um and they have to by by eating and, uh, and if, if they happen to make more zombies then you know they have no problem with that you know they typically don't attack each other you know they just you know expand you know and that is um a threat to uh, system of white supremacy you know um that sort of um behavior you know not attacking each other and just you know surviving and um uh, they were like they uh i think they even were like um, the the zombie was able to communicate like you know constructive information to them you know because they were able to like you know trade with the people so um if not white people were um you know behaving in a way where we're not like attacking one another and you know able to sh share constructive information with each other i think that would go a lot of long ways to um and white supremacy, which is why this movie is so popular because um, zombies were even more of a threat, you know, because they could um, reproduce, at least like the, the alpha one, the main one, they could reproduce and um, white people have a fear of um, their um, white genetic disappearing from planet earth because of like their low fertility rates and because they are a global minority. So it makes a lot of sense that these movies are really um, popular. And this was just a really um, highly, highly refined um, piece of um, racist propaganda. Zero Five, um, I have a question about the, the Lee zombie. I thought that if you were bit by the Lee zombie, like you become a Lee zombie or something like that. But if you're bit by the or, or maybe I'm not understanding something. Yeah, so what I what I thought is that if you were bit by the um, lead zombie, you became not something of um, his liking, but a, a higher um, like functioning zombie than like the ones who were bit by the people who were bit by um, the ones that he created, you know? Does that, okay. does that make sense yeah i got it i got it because i was like oh when batista got bit i was like oh so he's gonna be a lead zombie and then i'm like okay omari on omari oh, pop mr hardwick when he got bit i'm like oh he'll be a lead zombie right because he who did he get bit by the lead yeah. zombie or another one see i didn't even know that he got big so i suspect yeah. that he was a, <laughs> it, it, so i suspect it happened off screen but when I saw that he was perhaps infected, I just thought he got it because he got scratched by um by the main zombie during that fight. So I thought he got infected there because I'm thinking like you know two. I'm thinking this movie is like really like too um like smarter than it is. Um, so yeah, I just thought he got infected that way. But I guess he got bit off screen, which is really like um you know just just tacky filmmaking because something of like you know. Yeah, you know, it's it just a really lame way to hide that this black male misandry is coming up in the end of the film. Yeah. yeah. You know, it, you know, it's, it's like, you know, allowing black people to think that this guy is actually going to survive this. You know, black people aren't supposed to start survive stuff like this. You know, they're not smart enough. You know, like For a minute, that. I thought he was going to die first. Like, I thought he was going to die, like, early in the movie. <laughs> um yeah yeah he, yeah Zack Snyder did a, did a wonderful job he even put in a wife sacrifice for us uh with um Dieter you know sacrificing himself to save him <laughs> you know so yeah 
um yeah I, I don't know if um i think i may have shared all of my notes um yeah i touched all of my notes so i don't have anything else <laughs> yeah um yeah i should add just like the imagery in this film is really gory um and definitely like you know you know, continuing continuing the programming of like you know that blood and gore is fun. You know, it's 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 pleasant to see blood and guts and brains all over the place. So you know, just training the next generation of um, military participants and uh, race soldiers and racist man, racist woman, and uh, racist children. So. Would not recommend this film. Um, would I recommend it to non-white people? <laughs> yeah, I, I guess that was um. Yeah, I guess that was my um. I, I guess for my closing comment, um, I, um, it was brought to my attention that um, Zack Snyder also um, adopts non-white children. And um, so far, one of them have, um, ha ha has um, died to, uh, to suicide. So um, I'm like, this is why non-white people should not be adopted by um, suspected racists. And, um, and that is a racist tactic, that is a uh, detective um, uh, a pattern of behavior that I've detected amongst um, white people that they like to adopt non-white children and then those some of those non-white children end up dead um, whether that's um, whether it's them being um, driven to a suicide because of the racism possibly being practiced in the home or through the the white um, parents themselves killing them um, whether it's by driving them off a cliff or whatever it means they the heart family. doing it. Yes, yes, <laughs> ma'am. So maybe something to throw in there, you know, practicing racism in multiple areas of people activity. Um, that uh, director of this film. Would anyone like to share closing comments? No, that's it for me. Um... I enjoyed watching it with, um, you know, as a group, you know, with other people to discuss it. And um, yeah, and I hope to do it again. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, I'll go next. Um, I appreciated everyone's like really thorough analysis and notes. I feel like I was able to understand the film without actually having to watch it, which it was pretty gory. So I think that was like kind of good, but um, yeah, I just thought that um, your guys' analysis was was really in depth too. Like, guys were really taking notes and like observing a lot and saw a lot of Wells and moments. Yeah, a guy gets ate, ate by a zombie t uh, tiger, um, and that's some, that's a scene that should not be um, in anyone's uh, brain computer. So you definitely, um, yeah, thank you. I thank everyone, Miss B, Miss Kamaria, and Mrs. Sert for their very, very uh, constructive insight. And uh, we definitely will be doing this again.